Welcome to Central News, I'm Wayne Douglas. In today's news, secondary students from around the Bay of Plenty are gearing up to launch environmental projects in their schools and communities. More than 60 students in years 11 to 13 from schools around the region began planning projects as part of this year's Bay of Plenty Regional Council Youth Jam held in Rotorua. The annual three-day event supports the efforts by the Regional Council to engage young people environment in environmental awareness and action. The aim is to foster environmental awareness, youth leadership and civic participation. The focus for the 2014 event, which was held at Keswick Christian Camp in Holden's Bay, Rotorua, was Inspire Action, Making Things Happen in Your Community. During the Youth Jam, students develop plans for projects to implement within their schools and the wider communities. Working, with, uh, working through basic steps of project planning to inspire action and reinforce what they're learning at school. They also attended workshops and presentations covering various aspects of project planning and implementation. Bay of Plenty Regional Council Community Engagement Advisor Janie Stevenson says the event also provided an opportunity to network with other schools and develop ongoing relationships to share environmental projects and collaboration. She says the idea is to encourage and help the students to develop and implement long-term environmental projects and give them the skills and confidence to inspire and empower others to action as well. Projects are likely to cover a variety of areas such as energy conservation, waste reduction initiatives, community gardens, reducing pollution and riparian plantings. Free Bay Hopper buses will be running this Easter weekend, offering a cheap and easy way to get around Tauranga. Bay of Plenty Regional Council says it will not be charging passengers using the Tauranga bus network from Saturday and Sunday, April 19th and 20th. In addition, buses will run more often on all routes. Council spokesperson Lyle Thurston says the idea behind the free weekend is to provide a no-fuss way for people to enjoy the city. He says Easter weekend is always a big weekend in Tauranga, with a number of events on for people to intend, attend and enjoy, and now people can get where they want to go without the bother of thinking about parking or the traffic. Bay Hopper buses will not run on Good Friday and will operate to the public holiday timetable on Easter Monday. For more information, including to download the Easter weekend timetable, you can visit Baybus, that's one word, baybus.co.nz, or you can also call 0800 4 Bay Bus. That's 0800 422 928 for timetable information. YIA are looking for eco innovators that can shape the future of our working environments. These would be sustainable with an emphasis on reducing waste and unnecessary processes or equipment. Timothy Allen, Managing Director of Locus Research, says it's important that young innovators understand how this can be applied. I think these days it's vital, I mean any student that's coming through YA really needs to try and get a handle around the, the idea and um, how that they can apply it in their work, particularly if you consider that innovation is primarily taking products and services to market, um, if those products and services aren't sustainable then you know you have a problem at the end of the day, so it's, it's pretty critical that they understand it, um, I mean how we're trying to communicate it to them is, and this is, comes back down to the idea of it can be both a product or a service is that you know some physical products can be removed by making it a service um, which may remove something from having to be produced. So we're saying well look you know you can you can have something that's comprised of both products and services you know even Gmail at the end of the day has a bunch of servers that somebody has to do that's a physical product and then if you take a Toyota I mean you know, it still has to be serviced at the end of the day, so those things are mutually dependent. So working really holistically is the way to develop more sustainable products and services going forward. And most businesses these days, I mean, whilst they have an idea about it, um, they're led by people who probably don't fully understand it and it isn't really in there. Um, well, they've struggled to sort of integrate it into a way that they work on a day-to-day. -day. I mean, you look at our kids now, recycling is institutionalised in school, all of those sort of things. So the kids coming through, they're definitely going to be the ones that will make the difference. And in sport tonight, replacement first five Gareth Anscombe had a solid game for the Chiefs against the Rebels last weekend and has left selectors few questions about his ability to fill the shoes of the injured Aaron Cruden, who was out for six weeks.
However, the Chiefs are not talking up their form ahead of this weekend's clash with the Crusaders at Waikato Stadium. This comes after a hard-fought but indifferent performance against the Rebels. And Chiefs in-form winger Tim Nunai-Williams is relishing the chance to go up against the Crusaders, but knows they'll need a full 80-minute game and be clinical right across the park. He says the Crusaders are the benchmark. When you come up against them, there's not much being said. You just have to know if you let your guard down, they'll punish you. So go the Chiefs and good luck, guys. And taking a look at the marine forecast now for Raglan, northerlies 25 knots, rising to northeasterlies 40 knots, high tide 11.17 a.m. And over the hill to Tauranga, northeasterlies 15 knots, rising to 25 knots, and high tide is at 8.31 a.m. And coming up, history relived for the Battle of Gate Pa, concerns over the number of traumatic brain injuries, and shaping the Garden and Arts Festival with sculptors. Welcome back to Central News. This Easter weekend sees the popular National Jazz Festival back in Tauranga with a host of local, national and international artists. Central News caught up with Tracy ruddick Gudsell and Denny Spree of Creative Tauranga to see what they're looking forward to. Now the Jazz Festival is coming up this weekend and there is quite a bit to do. Can you tell us about some of it? Ooh, what do you pick? Yeah. I mean, there's the Sisters of Swing, Midge Marsden, always a popular, yeah. the historic Jazz Village. There's the Downtown Carnival, and there's um, Anita O'Day. Hurricane Party. Hurricane Party at Moe Pack. I'm going to go this year. Yeah. Haven't been before, but I've heard it's a blast. And one that intrigues me at the moment is Miho Wada. Now, she's described as um, Japanese-born, New Zealand musician, and she's a punk ninja flautist which means she plays a flute and I've been quite <laughs> intrigued by the whole thing so I think I'm gonna have to go yeah, yeah so yeah there's a lot on I think there's a taste of something for everyone yep. the city will be alive the village will be alive and really you know just go along and check it out and also mm. the gallery will be open uh, Creative mm. Tauranga's gallery will be open so they can come in and view the bleeding vinyls exhibition yeah. as well it's a really really good vibe for the city yeah. that whole weekend and even if you don't think you're a jazz fan you generally find yeah. something that you enjoy yep. so yeah we'll see you over the Easter weekend a hurricane party that sounds interesting what's that well it's um well, I'm a novice to this, really. It's, it's really just a um, group of musicians that all to get together at Moe Pack Performing Arts Centre, which has just been revamped with a new soundproof roof just for the occasion. And, yeah, it's just a lot of music, a lot of people in one space, a bit like a dance party yeah. from what I can understand. So, you know, one hasn't been to anything like that in a number of years, <laughs> so it will be... Yes. A bit of fun. It will be fun for us. It will. And we're about to see you up to with Harry McCleary. Oh, oh come on. Wow. He is. We're down to 145,000 to raise. Yes. Woo. That's awesome. From 700, so we're not going too badly. We do have Botany Pots on display in our gallery at the moment, and that's been really encouraging for us with the project to see the reactions of you know all ages particularly the children they all shriek and um, I can't wait to bring Hercules Morse out actually no, he is as big as a horse and he's divine so we are of course still continuing to fundraise we'd love to see the puppies on the waterfront this side of Christmas <laughs> and um, there's a couple of initiatives going on at the moment one is Noel Leeming are holding a fundraising week we are between 5 and 11 May if you pop into Noel Leeming and buy any of their wares, a rebate donation will come back to the Harry McCleary awesome. project. And it will be, um, the, the prices for that particular event will be at cost plus GST with the rebate coming back. So you're getting everything. Wow. We're giving you something and um, we get something back for the project. So good on Noel Leeming, we're really wrapped about that. Yeah, it's fabulous. The historic village will be in New Orleans theme as well as much, much more, so be sure to experience the culture. This year commemorates the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gate Pa. Hillary spoke with event organiser Buddy McCurry to find out more. There's so much happening for the um, commemoration. Let's start with what's going on. Can you tell us about the exhibition? Right now? Yeah, there's a couple of exhibitions actually. Um, 
The one here at the moment is uh, what we call Images of Gate Power, and it's an exhibition which incorporates all the drawings and photographs from the time, all set out. So it's been held here in St George's Church at Gate Power. The other one is happening down at the Tauranga Art Gallery. It's an exhibition of all the drawings of um, Horatio Robley, who was uh, one of the soldiers here at Gate Power, went on to become a general, and left some Māori descendants behind when he left Tauranga. So, um, quite a colourful character. There are so many events happening. I mean, who's been involved? Uh, from locally, um, well, just about most of the um, well-established businesses in Tauranga are supporting this by sponsoring various things, whether it be from um, project management to um, digging holes to pouring concrete. Um, there's quite a bit of construction going on around the reserve itself, um, which has been very helpful. Other people have been sponsoring things like the speech competition for the secondary school students. Um, and the finals for that are being held tomorrow um, at the at the college. Um, there are also is bank sponsorships. One of the banks has got a cannon sitting in its front door. Um, you know, just a whole range of things. So what do you have for those who want to learn a little bit more about the history of the Battle of Gate Par? Well, I mean the best advice is just go and Google Battle of Gate Par and it'll throw up a whole lot of websites. Um, uh, the one that will probably come up first will be the Tauranga Library one, which has got a lot of information. The trust that I'm working for has its own website, again that has information on it. Or if you're a fan of social media, just go and check out the Facebook page, Commemoration Battle of Gate Park. Yeah. Something quite exciting is happening on the 26th. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, we've got a, a group of people coming who um, um, belong to the recreationist, I think that's the word, or reenactment group of the Royal, um, the Royal Constabulary. Anyway, they have a whole set of cannons, Armstrong cannons and mortars that um, are, are replicas of those that were used at Gate Park. So they're coming and we're going to set them up in the a Domain and they're going to fire them off. Um, and people are going to be given the opportunity to fire one of these things. So it's going to be quite quite interesting for kids and that kind of thing. Also with them we'll have people who dress up in the uniforms of the 43rd Regiment and the 65th Regiment, uh, who also had people here at Gate Power in 1864. Um, so they're going to be showing, demonstrating the gear, that the kind of gear they had, and they'll be firing their muskets as well. So, yeah, lots of great things for kids to do. Um, and uh, we're looking, really looking forward to that happening. After the break, the widening effects of traumatic brain injury. Researchers from the University of Waikato and AUT have joined forces for a study into the long-term effects of traumatic brain injury. Anne-Marie spoke with Associate Professor Nicola Starkey and Senior Research Fellow Dr Kelly Jones to discuss the purposes of the study. Nicola Starkey and Dr Kelly Jones, welcome to Central News. Nicola, tell me about Bionic For You. It makes me want to think of the $6 million man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, is it? It's not the $6 million man. Um, the name of the original study was Bionic, which was Brain Injury Outcomes New Zealand in the Community. So that study was focused on trying to find out how common traumatic brain injury was um, on a population based level. So we wanted to know about people who didn't go to hospital, who bumped their heads, rugby mm. players on the rugby field, kids falling in playgrounds, how common, how mm. frequent was TBI. Um, bionic for you is actually um, stands for the Bionic Four Year Outcomes. So this for this study, we're actually following up the participants we identified in the original study four years after their injury. So the study is led by Professor Valerie Fagan from the National Institute of Stroke and Applied Neurosciences at AUT University. That's fantastic. It's, it's, and it's so good that a study like this is happening. Are you hoping that it's going to increase awareness of head injuries in the community? Yes, certainly. I think the original Bionic study conducted four years ago now has, has already done a lot to raise awareness of um, traumatic brain injury, particularly around mild injuries mm. and the importance of um, paying attention to those injuries, um, seeking advice from a practitioner, um, raising awareness of the potential outcomes of injury. Mm. Um, and having this four-year follow-up, I think, continues to 
contribute to raising awareness of TBI. Is there a difference between concussion, head injury and traumatic brain injury or is it, are they different terms for the same thing? Mm -hmm. It's a really good question. Um, concussion is certainly a traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of a head injury, if that's associated with, for example, loss of consciousness, someone being dazed or confused, uh, somebody not remembering the incident, um, or perhaps in the case of, of children, mm. some significant uh, out of character sorts of behaviours, then that would also be indicative of a traumatic brain injury. And you've got a particular inter interest in children. Mm -hmm. How do head injuries occur in, in children, accidentally, I hope? Uh, yes, well, we took a, a close look at how children were sustaining mm. traumatic brain injuries. Um, predominantly, most injuries were due to a fall of some sort. So whether that might be falling off equipment, a fall off a bicycle, um, tripping perhaps. Yeah. Um, we also looked at what children were doing when they had the injury and predominantly these injuries happen during leisure and usual play activities. Mm. What should we do if our child receives a knock to the head Nicola? Should we be racing them to the doctor or just keeping them quiet? Um, keeping a careful eye on them and watching out for any symptoms, keeping them uh, reasonably quiet and giving them plenty of rest. But if you're the slightest bit concerned, going and visiting the GP is always worthwhile. And for how long after a knock to the head? Say, for instance, my 11-year-old son fell off the playground at school, came home and he had a bit of a headache and I sort of went, oh, you'll be fine, just, you know, mm -hmm. go and lie down and maybe don't watch telly for a little while. How long should that, you know, do, will the symptoms be ongoing or will he come right the next day or should I let the teacher know? Mm. What we would suggest is that certainly um, we're not encouraging people to take every child who has a mild knock to the head to the hospital. I probably, <laughs> um, <laughs> probably start doing that. <laughs> what, what we are uh, saying is that it can be very important mm -hmm. to visit the family GP, for example, um, to go back again if you have any ongoing concerns. Um, and it may be quite some time down the track mm -hmm. where perhaps you've noticed changes in your child and you might like to get some further mm. advice. There are a range of community support groups mm. um, available, for example. Um, it could be worth talking with the mm. school as well. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Nicola, the, the, we've heard a lot about traumatic brain injuries or head injuries mm -hmm. in, with regards to sport. Mm. Players from the 90s are coming out now and saying, yeah, yeah, I've got a bit of a uh, short-term memory loss. Yeah. Head injury? Yes. <laughs> yes, we actually, as part of our study, um, we have we actually look specifically at people at how injuries were caused, and about 20% of the injuries overall in our study were a result of sporting accidents, um, predominantly rugby, cycling, and equestrian activities. Wow. Um, but you have to bear in mind that lots of people in New Zealand take part in rugby, mm. and so mm. in some ways that's not you know it wasn't corrected for the number of people that take part, mm. and so in some ways that's not that surprising. Of those, about half of the sports-related injuries were children, and the other half were adults. Um, and one of the things that we're particularly interested in is the effect of recurrent brain injuries. Mm -hmm. So a rugby player, for example, is, has a high risk of repeated mild brain injuries over the course of a rugby season. And there's increasing evidence that repeated injuries can actually go on to, you know, sort of lead to early onset dementia mm. and those types of things. So there is increasing awareness of having sufficient rest between head injuries if you're playing sport and not getting another head injury mm. too soon after a previous one. That's, a, that's probably a key message right there, and hopefully the study is going to do just that, increase awareness. Mm -hmm. I find it fascinating. Thank you so much for coming in. I feel like I've learnt a lot, and I'll take more notice of those bumps <laughs> to the heads now of my Great. children. Good. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you, and all the best for your study. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up next, sculpting in place at the Garden and Art Festival. Welcome back to Central News. Rex O'Brien is the coordinator of Sculptor Symposium for the Mount Drury Garden and Art Festival. And we talked with him about what's on show at the festival. 
Can you tell me about the Sculpture Symposium? This uh, Sculpture Symposium is the second one in the, under the Garden Art Fest. The first one was held in 2012, Taronga, on the Strand. This one uh, we're holding at Mount Jury Park, Mount Monganui, on the main beach. Uh, we've got 20 artists working in hardstone, andesite, uh, omaru stone, which is limestone, and artists working in wood. We're working for 10 days carving to produce works to be auctioned off on the Saturday of the 23rd um, in early afternoon. It was actually a bit of a hit last year. How well did it do? It went really well. Um, the, having the event in the public in downtown Tauranga was a hit, especially with the public. Um, Artist-wise, it was great. They all enjoyed it. They really thought it was a good symposium. And as sales go at the end, we uh, done really well. All artists sold and the public got right involved with the auction. It went really well. You are moving it this year though, why is that? Um, we are moving it uh, to the Mount. Uh, it's a more open area and uh, it's a more public area. We have a lot of people coming down in the evenings and just for the general public, accessibility as far as parking, walking, all that, um, it's just a better position for the public to get involved. And the piece behind you was actually created at the symposium in 2012. Can you tell me a little bit about it? This piece was done by Peter Cramond and it's of the final penguin release um, from the arena disaster of the penguins that got injured or covered in oil and they were um, tended for and then released back into the environment. Um, it, it's at the area where the penguin release happened and it's made of Omaru stone and it's plinthed on salvage timber from the Rena ship. Can you tell us what kind of works can we expect to see? Um, the works will range um, from mouldy design, figurative to abstract works with the artists um, coming from as far as uh, Northland to South Island, and we'll be working in the hardstone, armour, and wood with artists such as Jocelyn Pratt, who's a renowned international and national sculptor. Um, we've got Paul Brunton from Auckland, who'll be working in wood. Uh, Joe Kemp, a local Rotorua, working in wood. Um, very well recognised international and national artists. Of course, for more information on the festival, you can visit Garden and Art Fest, one word, .co.nz. Taking a look at the Waikato weather now, Hamilton, your Thursday is in for rain with strong gusty easterlies, a high of 20 and a low of 14. For Pyro, rain with heavy falls developing and easterlies rising to 110 kilometres per hour in exposed places, uh, easing to a few showers by evening by the way. A high of 22 and a low of 14. For Matamata, the same as Pyro, high winds and heavy rain, a high of 18 and a low of 15. Te Aumutu, rain with high winds and a high of 20 and a low of 14. For Tokoroa, a high of 17 and a low of 15. And taking a look at the wider Bay of Plenty now, Tauranga, rain becoming heavy. Easterly is becoming strong, a high of 21 and a low of 17. And for Tupuke, heavy rain and high winds with 19 as the high and a low of 17. And that's Central News for tonight. Make sure you like us on Facebook and let us know if there's news or an event in your community that we can support. Thanks for having us at your place. I'm Wayne Douglas for Marie. This has been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.